Welcome to MoCo's Most Famous. My name is Joe Yashroff, and I've got a little extra spring in my step today because we're going to be talking to iconic, legendary comedian Lewis Black, who's got strong Montgomery County roots. Uh, he went to Maryland, and he's had an incredible career doing stand-up comedian. You know him from the movie Inside Out. Delighted to be talking to Lewis Black. And uh, Lewis, you don't mind if I call you iconic, do you? Because you're an iconic comedian in my book. Well, that's very kind. Um, my mother will be happy to hear that. And, and, I heard, and we're going to talk about her if we have time in, in a little bit. But you are, we're talking to you today because you're going to be part of an MCPS event tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a panel discussion about careers. And I kind of, I get these things all the time and you kind of look at the names like uh, whatever, whatever. And then I see Lewis Black. I said, that can't be Lewis Black. And I went, Lewis Black? So how did that come to be? How, how are you part of this panel tomorrow? Um, well, they got in touch, and uh, I'm, I got a lot, uh, and, you know, with things the way they are, I'm, there's not <laughs> really got a lot to do, so <laughs> I'm pretty much free. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, I, I think they got in touch because I, I, went, I, was, uh, I spoke at the, uh, the Montgomery County, uh, had a uh, kind of a, 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 I don't know if it was a countywide graduation. Mm -hmm kind of virtual graduation. And uh, I did a, a video for that. And so right. they, they knew that I, and I graduated, I went to, I'm from there. Mm -hmm. I went to, I'm from Silver Spring around White Oak and I went to uh, Springbrook High School, so. Well, that, that must be a big thrill for them to know that you're gonna be a part of this. Um, now, what, so what kind of things are you gonna be talking about? Are we have prepared statements? Are you, is it a Q and A? What, uh, what kind a of- Q and A, uh, if it was prepared statements, I don't, I wouldn't be doing it. I don't, <laughs> I got the, no, I wouldn't, no, I, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's basically, uh, they're asking questions about what it's, how did you get involved in your career? It's, it's trying to give uh, students a sense, I think of, uh, you know, what, what to expect and how to go about it and, you know, what you do and what is it like? I like your line on Twitter. I don't know if you're a big tweeter, but uh, your line was, I went to school in Montgomery County back before there were careers. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if I may ask, what year did you graduate from Springbrook? I graduated Springbrook in 1966. 66. There were a lot of uh, things going. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no it's all right. Go on. Uh, there were a lot of things going on in the world back then, in the area and in the world. So that must have been a, a, um, a crazy time. It was a, it was a crazy time. It was a good time. We were lucky. It was a, it was a great time to go to school in the sense of, to be in that school because we uh, entered the, the school was was evolved from we, we when we walked in. I was a seventh grader. And it, it, the, the, everybody in the school was seventh and eighth and ninth grade, I believe. Yeah. And we shared, uh, we shared time at the Northwood high school and uh, we did a split day there. And then they opened our high, uh, our high school, but it was seventh, eighth and ninth, the next year, eighth, ninth and 10th, ninth, 10th and 11th uh, and 10th, 11th and 12th. So we went literally from seventh to 12th grade um, at that school. And I think, in a lot of ways, that really served us in good stead. Mm -hmm. What are your memories of, of living and growing up in Montgomery County? Do you have fond memories? Is it a combination of fond and not so fond? No, I have great memories. It was the last time you could, uh, it was the last uh, great moments of being middle class uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and what it was like to be middle class and the definition of middle class. And then mm -hmm. um, uh, I have to credit. Um, uh, of all people, uh, Bill Maher spoke oh, about yeah. uh, when he was growing up in, in middle class. You know, they you would drive through a neighborhood and next to our neighborhood was a it was kind of a a very nice kind of a, a wealthy neighborhood. And I never and, and Bill said you didn't really feel like they had anything more than you. It was bigger, it was better, but you didn't feel like oh boy. Boy, they got stuff. I want that stuff. Mm -hmm. You didn't have that sense because back then, I mean, we, uh, it was great. We had pretty much everything. We had a, a the, the summer, we, there, was a, there was a recreation center during the summer and it ran all summer, much to the relief of my mother. It started at eight o'clock, it went to five. No one called daycare, uh, you know, and um, 
And I started there when I was very young. And every summer I'd go there. It was like camp. Uh, only it was run by the county. And uh, it was terrific. And uh, so it was, you know, we had a lot. Um, there were a lot of advantages that uh, we had at that time. Sure. And uh, that I think over time had been lost. I mean, because I know that I ended up doing a, um, a fundraiser for, for my high school mm -hmm. and came in and... Uh, and that would have been unheard of back when I went to school. Yeah. So it was it was a, a real it was a great time. And and the teachers that I had there were this. I mean, I'm really blowing eloquent about them, but it really is. Uh, mm -hmm. It was an extraordinary group of teachers. Many who went on to work within uh, the ranks of the of like the they were the ones who ended up kind of you know working in the you know going from teaching into into the bureaucracy, but in the, mm -hmm. the sense of uh, like, you know, working in terms of creating curriculum. They were really young. They were inspired. Uh, they inspired us. And, uh, uh, and I, 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 can't, I, I had some great friends there who still are friends. Mm -hmm. and now your mom was a teacher, right? For a long time? She was a substitute teacher at, at Springbrook, which can uh, really, it was, it could have been debilitating, but it was okay. She, it worked out fine. My did brother, you, were, did, did she ever teach you when you were in the classroom? Um, she did. My, uh, I, and it, it was fine by me because uh, I thought she was, I thought she was good. My brother would not do it. My brother was out of there. He really? Would not, yeah, he was. I'm not. She's not. No, I'm. I'm skipping that class. <laughs> Now, uh, I hear, so you, I'm guessing you had a funny family, and I've heard that your, I'm not going to say your mom was funnier than you, because I have no idea, but I've heard things. Yes. So how funny was your mom? A brilliant. Her level of sarcasm was brilliantly funny. She was, uh, uh, she still is. I mean, at, uh, at 102, she still will. Wow. Knock you out. So it's pretty, pretty amazing. You know, you think. And my father, too, had a really, you sit there and you go, boy, I don't know if he's listening. And then all of a sudden a zinger would come out. And then he'd, he'd think, boy, he's going away again. And another one would come out later. They, they really had uh, a terrific um, sense of, of comedy. So is your style, I mean, it's kind of an obvious question, but is your style based on, on their humor for, around the house? Or did it evolve? Or how? I think it was evolved in part because of them, uh, for sure. I, I'm pretty sure of that, and uh, for sure, because uh, my father, you know, he uh, he guided me toward a toward certain books like uh, Catch Twenty Two, which is a very very funny book, which I read when I was very very young, yeah, and uh, and which I found to be very very funny. And my and I, I think my mother, my mother kind of taught me, you know, how to be funny, and my father told taught me. Uh, you know, kind of when to stop. My mother didn't have a, my mother would just keep going at times. She would go. Mm -hmm. And my, my father had a, a sense of uh, economy. And uh, I think between the two of them and my friends, I, uh, the people that I, the kids, the guys I hung out with and the women I hung out with back then were, were funny people. Um, so every comedian has to have a shtick. Otherwise, every comedian would do the same kind of thing, right? Right. So your shtick, it, correct me if I'm wrong, is kind of an angry man. Yes. Um, are you really an angry man, or is that just shtick? I think it's based in part on my uh, once again coming from my my mother, uh, who was who was constantly angry, and <laughs> and I learned how to d do it on stage uh -huh. to make it funny. Um, I am. Uh, I was angry for a long time. I'm still angry. I'm still an angry person, but I'm not. Uh, uh, but I. It, it's where my humor comes. From. My humor starts there, and people find me funny when I'm angry. Yeah. So they don't take it seriously. <laughs> so, in part because I kind of bluster and right. I I trip over myself, and uh, um, and and so it really is. Um, it, 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 it's, it's what motivates my humor is I okay. see something in the paper and I go, you got to be kidding me. And it starts from there and it's usually okay. something that really irritates me. Well, you don't seem like an angry man at all. Um, so uh, 
I, I don't even know where, where I'm going with that, but uh, you seem like the nicest man ever. Well, and, that's because uh, I've been in lockdown. So, <laughs> you know, they, they uh, and uh, if you really wanted, if we weren't talking to the uh, Montgomery County public school systems right now, I could really. I see. I, see. I certainly could go on for a couple hours here about, uh, there are certainly places people can find my anger. But I mean, the best place really to find it or kind of see it in its essence, I think, is is Inside Out, where I, the, um, the, where I was, the, that was the real honor to be asked to be. That was when I kind of knew, what, that's one of those things you go, oh, I did, I did get it. And they got it. I was, uh, so that really uh, was something. You, uh, you read my mind because I was going to go there. I was saying you can see your anger in your stand-up specials, but in, in uh, Inside Out, which was a brilliant movie by Peter Docter, um, yeah. you, you were unbelievable. And I don't know if you can't get an Oscar, I guess, for those kind of movies, but I mean, it was, it, I mean, everybody was great. Amy Poehler and, and the rest, but. No, so, hey, it was a remarkable cat, Mindy Kaling and uh, Phyllis Smith, I think. And it yeah. Was, really. um, so tell us a story about that, that we may not know. I mean, we've all seen it five times, but tell us something that we may not know, whether it's about you or, or something. Well, we, that we weren't in the same room. Okay. We did this, uh, a lot of people think that we were all standing around together and did those scenes together, and we didn't. Um, you know, some some of them may have. I don't think any of them did. I was never in the room with anyone except Peter and Jonah, Jonas, mm -hmm. and the the uh, and the uh, and a, uh, the other producer or a uh, someone who was uh, uh, um, the um, one of the animators. Maybe would be there, uh, but it was me. Yeah, and, uh, that was really amazing because you didn't really need to be with them because they, they, they manipulated the the little the the, the what animation does is they manipulated the body. So you, all they needed was they knew what the body was going to do. They knew so once they they so they knew where the voice they wanted the voice to be. Once sure. they, and so they were the ones who would go, and I would say to them a lot of actors you know who are certainly uh, I consider to be better actors than me would say, you know, uh, would be upset. But I would say, if, you, if, if I'm doing something, you want me to do it it's another way. And they, and every so often they go, you know, try this. And, uh, and so they knew what they wanted to hear. They knew what they were going after. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. I've always wondered, and I know uh, our time is tight here. Yeah. Um, why do comedians make not only many comedians make not only good actors but good dramatic actors? Why do you think that is? I think because uh, I think that uh, we've uh, because we're in a sense we're acting mm -hmm. up Perfect. there. Uh, we're we go on stage, you know, we basically uh, believing um, that we're funny. You know, um, so we're committed to the fact we've made an agreement with ourselves. We're committed to the fact that, hey, I'm funny. Mm -hmm. so what an actor does, what great actors do with a role is uh, is the commitment. So there's a level of commitment that a, a comic brings to their work uh, and uh, that they can bring when it comes to uh, uh, to serious to serious material. And in a lot of ways, it, you know, it. I think, and it is that, um, and I'm sure some of the others could explain it better. Other comics I know who have got it because I know a number of, and, and even friends of mine who are great comic actors who are really brilliant when it comes to being serious. Uh, that it's there's a that you're you don't have to worry about being funny. You just have to. You've got to. It's it's really you never have to. It, it's easy in a sense. You hate to say this. But there's kind of an easier, there's a more of an ease with it, which allows you to commit more to it because you don't really have to make someone laugh. You just have to commit to, you know, the, like the best thing is, is if you're, you know, one of the, one of the great things is I've seen it a few times in my life with actors that I know who are really nice people who, who have to play someone who's just, mm -hmm. you know, not, who's a horrible person. Sure. And they're phenomenal at it. It's almost because they've been given, and that's the other thing, is a freedom that you're given there. That in that you don't have to, you, all of a sudden you don't have to be funny. There's a certain amount of freedom that you have there. 
I don't know if I explained that well. Oh, no, you did. You did. I want to know how much is COVID, the fact that, you know, we live in this world now, how much is that killing you to not be able to stand up in front of people and make them laugh live? It, I mean, it's upsetting because it's like, you know, it's my, it's what I'm married to. I mean, I love right. doing it. It's my career. And a long time ago, I made, in a sense, I've, I've written about it, that I made that commitment to being, um, to being a, a comic. I committed to that. I committed to my career over committing to a family or having a family. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's been a tough one, yeah. uh, but also, uh, you know, it, it's been tough on everybody, but it's, yeah. it's a lot tougher for other people. I mean, sure. Sure. I, I was, at least there was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm able to survive on a certain level. Um, uh, you know, I have been able to, you know, do all right in, in terms of, you know, I can get my, I can get food and shelter, et cetera. But others are really going through much tougher times than I am. So for me to go, oh boy, I'm, I'm not able to, I'm not able to be, I'm not, I can't get on my tour bus and go to, you know, and come in to ride into DC and work at the Warner Theater. Oh, poor me. No, but I, I miss it. And what I, and, and I, but I will not, um, I don't, and I know I don't miss it to the point of where I'm going to be doing. It's one thing for us to be sitting here talking in a Zoom room for me to do Zoom comedy. I, no, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's absurd. I just don't, I don't, get, I don't feel it. I don't get it. I need to be in a room because I write in front of people. And that's what I miss. I, I really miss that the writing so that I have a thought and I can complete it. Now it's like I have the thoughts and I, I literally can show you. It's like hundreds of pieces of paper that have got nothing but chicken scratch. And, and, and I know that George Carlin used to do this kind of thing, but uh -huh. he would, his stuff was really funny. Mine is just the beginning of something. And then it's like, now I got nowhere to go. So now I'm stuck with this. Oh boy. You know, I got, Military industrial complex. That's what I've written down here. Ha, 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 ha. You know, so I got no place to take it. Okay. And that's, that's tough. Describe to me the nirvana when you, you own a room, whether it's for one joke, whether it's for five minutes, whether it's for an entire hour. Describe to me that feeling when you're on stage and you know you have them in the palm of your hand. You're the same person. You're all the same person. It's what really... It means that you all are uh, completely at one together. That um, you, it would be hard to separate when you're when you're in that moment, which happens rarely. I mean, there's a certain joy to doing stand up, and there's a you know, there's certainly a, a a rush to it. And uh, but there is a, a and I've experienced it just a few times in my life on stage where. It's almost as if um, I don't know if they're talking through me or I'm talking for them. It just is the cycle is like this and you can't tell where it begins and where it ends. And that, go, and then, and that goes on for a certain amount of time until you go, God, this is really, and then it's gone. <laughs> but, but for that, those few moments, it's got to feel it. Yeah. Pretty and there's always a sense, too, of when even without that, that it's really, uh, you know, people come to see you after a while um, and they enjoy it. I mean, the, the, the luck that I've had is just to have an audience that knows that they're coming in a sense to see me right in front of them, that I'm writing these things and that they're really kind of I'm I'm completed by their presence. Mm hmm. And I'm, uh, my work is completed by their presence. That was very well put. So the opposite of that, and you probably have to go back decades when you're up there and you're dying and no, they're, either they're not paying attention. Um, what is that like? Or what was that like back in the day when you're coming up? It's the same. I've watched all of us go through that. I've watched, uh, the, I was in one night, I was in a comedy club and there was, it was, Ray Romano, Dave Attell, uh, there was a few others, me, can't, I've, I've told the story a number of times, but, uh, and everyone bombed, everybody. Ray had been already on his show for a couple of years. 
Uh, nobody was bulletproof that night. Yeah. Um, and what I learned was that I, I kind of knew instinctively before that. And, and this is when I was, when I was, you know, had chops when I was good, you know, getting good at what I was doing was good. It was that, um, what you, you, um, you, you know, what it feels like is, you know, you're dying and you, and it really is horrifying. Um, and you kind of enjoy it in a perverse way. I mean, if you enjoy dying, it's one of the things I tell somebody who wants to be, you know, you'll know, because if you really enjoy dying, chances are there's a possibility you'll be a comic. But there's also, there's, if you're really going to be a comic, there has to be this thing in you that goes, well, you know, they've hated me for 10 minutes, but wait, because I got this. And they haven't heard this one, and then I'm going to get them. Now, you've already 25 feet in the hole, okay? And all you're doing is taking a shovel, and you're digging the hole deeper. But in your brain, you're going, oh, here comes the good one. And you dig deeper. And they go, well, that didn't work. But, wow, it's a good thing I got this next one. <laughs> That's fascinating. All right. Um, what is the best? Can you give me a, your best clean, quick joke? Is there such a thing? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. And if you don't want to do it, that's totally understandable. I don't. I, I don't do jokes. Is the problem? That's right. Okay. Observational. Like kind of, been, um, you know, they're very. It it comes within a framework of a story usually, and that's really okay. what I think I do. All right. What makes you happy? And then we're going to wrap up. What 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 makes you the happiest? In life, if I may ask, being with friends and yeah. uh, uh, that really is probably what makes me happy. Being with folks I really like, yeah. and, um, and where where there I'm I'm spending time where I don't have to be the where in one of the I don't have to. What's sad about this time of being of of COVID is is that. One of the great things we would have been to have been with people uh, so that I, you know, okay, I'm not going to have to entertain. So they're going to be the ones entertaining. It's always like a pleasure for me to go to dinner with the, with people. But my friends all do other things. I've got friends in this business, but a lot of my friends do other things. And uh, it's a pleasure to sit down with them and hear about those and those experiences. How bad is it when somebody like me or someone tries to be funny in front of you trying to impress you? I'm sure you've gotten that your whole life. Is that annoying or do you just kind of it like accept you it? You just kind of take it with the, you know, it's, it's, it's annoying. But you, as, as, my, as my friend Kathleen Madigan says, she's learned to go, when they start to do that, she goes, excuse me, let me get a pencil so I can write this down. <laughs> Which is really, there's every so of you know, the people who come up with ways to deal with that. There's a, there's a vaccine for everything. That is a great way to end. I want to wish you luck tomorrow at the event. I think it's really cool that you're doing that and giving back to the place where you grew up. We're going to promote that. And uh, I hope it goes well for you. And I really want to thank you, Lewis, for, for taking the time out to, to join me and us on uh, Moco's Most Famous. Uh, thank you. Take care. Take care. Thanks a lot. It was great.